All right, for my next video, I want to talk about how to convert from logarithmic form to exponential form. And then I'll do one going the opposite way as well. I know you already have some videos in our folder that go over this. I just wanted to give you, you know, some more options. So I'm very visual. So I like to look at things in terms of just the pieces rearranging. So we have logarithmic form and exponential form. And they all have three parts. They have the base, which is the number that gets raised to an exponent in exponential form. And in logarithmic form, it's just written down here as a little subscript with the log. That's the base. Then you have the exponent in exponential form. And in logarithmic form, that just comes out on the other side of the equation. So basically, a logarithmic form is solving for that exponent. And then this other part we call the argument. Okay, and all we're going to do is just rearrange them. So we're going to identify which parts are which and just rearrange them. So Looking at number six, the base is 20. The argument is 400. And really to stick with my visual over here, I should have made this be a little box around the 20. All right. And my answer to the logarithm, I know, is going to be the exponent in exponential form. So my exponent is 2. So what I have in exponential form is that 20 raised to the second power, or 20 squared, equals 400. That's it. That's all I'm doing, just rearranging. So I can do that even if... I have a fraction, it's no big deal. I just have to identify the parts. So my base here is 256. My argument is 16. And my exponent will be one half. It's okay that it's a fraction, it doesn't matter. Whatever is in this position, fraction or not, any of these can be fractions, it's fine. So we put the base, which is 256, we raise it to the power of one half, and we set that equal to 16. By the way, raising something to the one-half power is the same as taking the square root. That's just one of the properties of exponents. We don't have to worry about that too much. But if you take the square root of 256, you get 16, because 16 squared is 256. All right, so that's really all we're doing here. So if you want to continue with that, you just need to identify the parts. So I'm just going to help you out with that a little bit here but not actually rewrite them. I'll leave that for you. There you go.